and welcome to another edition of my Become Unstoppable series. And as always, I have another amazing guest for you. Would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? Yes, um, I'm Helen Davidian and um, I've had a very unusual life, uh, beginning with my mum dying when I was less than two years old. And I didn't think I had any gifts or anything to offer the world. But apparently, later on, I was trained as a healer, a spiritual healer. And the guy told me I've done it all my life. So there you were. I had this gift and didn't know I had it. But when I look back on my life, I noticed that I had people said, how have you know to come now when we need you? And I said, I just felt I had to come. So that's me. And I'm very, very sensitive and I react to anybody in trouble, you'll have a good laugh. I see a woman on the pavement, I'll go up, find out why she's on the pavement, so and so on. Okay. So that's so how I start. We'll more about you in a little while, because we've got a few things to cover first. So first of all, for anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Judy Fitzpatrick, and I'm the founder of Millicide Therapy and Coaching, and I'm a multi-award winner and recently been published in quite a few publications. So I'm really excited. Hey. And my passion is working with people to uncover what's the root, prop, root of their problem, right? So that they can go from stuck to unstoppable. So I help my clients on a one-to-one -one basis and I help them in a group program as well, where we really look at taking you from, you know, removing that stress, building that confidence so that you can really become unstoppable. So, Helen, before yes. we start, I need to ask you my very famous question. So tell me, my lovely, what does being unstoppable mean to you? Well, as I am unstoppable, <laughs> <laughs> that's my answer, because I've had so many things that would make other people stop in their tracks and not do anything. I've just soldiered on. Oh. So um, that's unstoppable for me. Mm, yeah it's very much isn't it just pushing yourself doing things that you never thought you would do stepping Agreed. out of your comfort zone um yeah and same for me too it's, it's about when you start working on yourself and investing in yourself and you start loving who you are and trusting who you are then you start saying yes to things and that's when the doors start opening right agreed Yes, oh. absolutely. <laughs> so in your intro, obviously, you've already piqued my interest. So give us a little bit of a roundup. I know you're a woman of many talents and you do lots of different things, but what's your real passion right now? What's your focus? My focus is um, to stop people being afraid of death, mm -hmm. being afraid of life and um I've been through so many things that I can help people mm. through those things mm -hmm. from loss, um, uh, poverty. I've been evicted from my home. I've had everything happen to me mm. and I came through it all. So I want to help other people suffering like that to come through it. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Yeah, that is simple. Yeah. And how yeah. do you work with your clients? What What is it you do? Or what, what many things I should imagine, but yes. Um, well, I, I, I'm a spiritual healer, which I have been all my life. Mm -hmm. I'm also a trained counsellor. Um, so I've had people come for many different reasons, you know, and I use all my gifts mm -hmm. to help that person. Um, I, the first thing I do is have a, a session with them, finding out about them, letting them be happy with me. Mm -hmm. Because... When we go to work with somebody strange, we need to know what, who they are and what they do. Um, I'm, I've been to some practitioners in the past, and sometimes you're terrified because you don't know who they are and what they do. So mm. I sit down with them for a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes, while they get to know me and I get to know them. And that's how I start. Amazing. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's all about, yeah. you can't, we, we have to accept, don't we, as healers that not yeah. everyone's going to resonate with us. So it's finding true, true. a person, isn't it, who yeah. ticks those boxes. And as you said, I, I'm, I'm a trained counsellor as well, but I don't really use that modality a great deal now because I, I prefer now to work with the subconscious mind, as you, you obviously do. Right. Yes. And my journey has very much been like 35 years in the corporate world, very much lived in my head, 
yes you really understand that mind body connection you kind of hear the phrase don't you oh your mind your body is connected but didn't really get it until now um so in my journey of retraining i've trained in all different modalities myself now but the most important thing is tapping into your body tapping into your heart isn't it and i know you're really passionate about i it. work from the heart <laughs> yeah yeah. Because that, that is the epicenter, right? That's where, yes. you know, when we start listening to this, this is the ego kicking in. Yes, that's okay. right. And when we need to know something, we need to ask our heart, and aka our intuition, right? Yes. How, do you, how do you work with people to help them understand that? Um, well, I, I give them the example of when my life was saved um, by trusting my intuition. Okay. Had I not... I wouldn't be here now. Would you like to share that story now? Yes. I <laughs> was working abroad in a bank and a family, I was in my 20s, a local family had adopted me every weekend <laughs> to come and eat, live, stay with them and eat with them. And I was friendly with the daughter. And this particular Friday in the office, I got, I get, I pick everything up in my body, you see, because I'm a, a healer. And I, I felt terrible. I felt like somebody was trying to kill me. And I, I heard myself having to phone the mother up and say, I can't come today. But I couldn't tell her why, because I didn't know. Three hours later, the bus I would have gone on was bombed. Wow. And I, had I not listened, I would, I would be dead. So cold. <laughs> yes. Well, that was my most dramatic one. I've had many others, but that was the most dramatic. And I tell people this and I say, remember 9-11 the original 9-11, mm. people like me didn't go to work that day. They felt bad or felt something and didn't go. Um, so I'm just trying to say, always trust that first feeling or thought you get. That's your intuition. And then the mind comes in and tries to override it. Mm. Um, but don't let it. That is important. It's never wrong. Mm. Um, all through my life, things have happened that have shown me that is important and I try and get that over to anybody I say even if you get nothing else from talking to me trust your gut your intuition mm. um it's different in everybody and some it's in the gut some it's in the brain you know people get it in all different ways and I never tell anyone how to get it I mm. just say you will know if you go in the quiet you'll know where your gut come your thing comes from it's interesting because um, if you're not in tune with yourself, you're not necessarily going to notice it, are you? And that, that's the biggest issue. But when um, my great Dane Luther died, the day after he died, I just, for the, and I would say this is probably the first time that I've ever noticed it or taken any, I don't know, I would say it might be the first time it's happened, but it might not have been, but it's the first time. First time you're aware of it. Aware of it, yes. And the day after, I was sitting in the garden and crying and being upset, right? But I just got this message in my head, and it's my voice telling yes. me that I've got to write the book. Yes. It's yes. I've got. And it was like, it, it was very in deep, it was very detailed, right? And it, I saw these little images of like, sort of like bubbles, which were people's comments and stories and stuff like that. And it said, it's going to have this in, it's going to have this in it. And it was like, and oh, was, how wonderful. And I was like, what? <laughs> Okay, so I went indoors and said, apparently I've got to write a book. <laughs> and, it, and it was like, yeah. but the, one of the things was, because it, it was about the story of his life and how it helped transform people's lives and stuff like that. But it was all, and it very clearly said to me, and it's other people's dogs. Well, I can't remember now if it's dogs or animals, but it was yeah. like, get stories. So that's what, yeah. I, so I went out on Facebook, on Insta and Facebook and everything. And I just put a note out and I was like, oh, no, I don't know, but I've just been giving a message that we've got to write, right? But I've never had that before. And everybody gets a trigger in their life, whether it's through health, like your dog dying or whatever. Right. Sometimes people are not aware of things until that trigger comes along. Right, okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm different. Thing you I've get known all my life, you know, I've yeah. known my whole life. But what you're saying, all my clients, they come to me because they've had an incident like you're talking about. Oh. And sometimes it's through ill health. Mm. They get very, very ill. And that opens their ability to tune upstairs. I call it upstairs. 
yeah yeah fair yeah, yeah, yeah. be careful with that right because I, I i use the words universe but other people might call it god might they other people might call it yeah I mean, completely different. It doesn't matter, does it? It's just it what... doesn't matter. But I use upstairs because it's uh, non-denominational. Yeah, it's non I like that. Non-religious. Yeah, um, I, like I, I don't know why. I, th I think of them being higher than me, so that's why I call it upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> also, like tapping in. Yes. Isn't it? And the, yeah. other, the other thing, the other really amazing thing that happened was one of my clients um, registered a star for Luther. Right. So he, he sent me a certificate. Registered. A star, so you. Could, oh, a star. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah. when um I was doing my therapy, I'm, I'm still doing investing in myself all of the time, like doing therapy training. Yes. And um every time we did like a grounding exercise, it would be you know great grounding, da, da 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 da. And imagine you're looking into the sky and find your star of origin or your favorite. Oh, I see. That's why. Right. Yes. And uh, I get it. If that had happened a lot, but I was like, yeah, whatever. I didn't really mean too much. And then one day I went, oh. Oh my god, I've got my Lufa star. And from that moment I Oh Lufa was your dog. Lufa was my dog, yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't I didn't know. This yeah. is Lufa, yeah. I can't see it's not coming up. Yeah, it's my, my yeah. Oh sorry, sorry, sorry for the confusion. Yeah, yeah. So he so I now know when I want to connect to upstairs, I connect yeah. to my Lufa star. Makes sense. And then I, I can connect to the energy and that kind of like never happened to me before either. So I've been such a amazing journey. Yeah, I, 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 your journey is the way most people journey. Me, I've been in it all my life. So what's happened is I don't always listen to my own advice in the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you see, I have to tune in spiritually because right. that's how I am. Um, and I've seen miracles. I, what people call miracles I've actually seen I still don't know to this day how or why or when I'm going to get a miracle but they happen wow, but probably because um somebody told me why because I said why has that happened and they said you give so much love because I didn't have a mum I'm always full of love and I'm trying to give it out mm -hmm. and they said that's why you get clairvoyance with your work which I'm not supposed to know, no one's supposed to know about. I get all sorts because I, I'm giving an, a, a huge bundle of love mm -hmm. and they transform it into healing, miracles, or God knows what else. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know all this, but it's that's part of me. So, so can you take, take us back then to yeah. when you first started knowing that there was something, should we say, special about you? Well, I'm going to tell you something really funny. I, through my life, I've had out of body experiences. I've had all sorts and they happen and I'm very logical. So when it happens, I'm going, I, I was getting married to somebody and I'm on my way to the wedding and I suddenly saw him and me and a voice said, why are you marrying this man? Yes. And it only lasted three months. <laughs> um, oh, so you still went ahead with it. <laughs> well, I, I was on a trip. I was on a kid. I was on a tractor going to my wedding. There were five couples getting married. I couldn't say anything because that would disrupt mm. all five marriages. Mm. So I went ahead with it, and and I'm seeing us, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, where am I if I can see me? And then I shot back in my body. You see what I mean? That was an out of body experience, and I discussed it with a woman who's written a book on them, and I said. Is that, an, you know, what is that? And she said, that is an out-of-body experience. So that's when I knew I'd had one. Right. Um, I, I've, had, I've had really amazing things happen in my life. My son, who's had quite a troubled upbringing because I split with his dad, um, he phoned me up one day and he said, Mum, I saw you in my room last night. I said, what do you mean you saw me? And I was scared. Anyway, what happened is, do you remember what Jesus said? He said, everything I can do, you can do and more. A hologram of me or something like that went to him because he's my son to comfort him. So when my friends in Sweden, they phoned me up and said, thank you for the healing. And I said, well, it's very nice of you. But I said, loads of people have been praying. They said, we saw you. Now, the reason that's significant is um, uh, Annalie was in a past life with me. So we have a very strong bond. They're my best, bestest friends. And um, 
that then I understood why why my son had seen me and why they saw me. So I it was nothing magical. It was just that I give so much. People mm. are aware. People I give healing to, if they're very sensitive, they feel my aura. They feel my energy. Uh, way ahead of what I do, if you understand what I mean. Right. Mm. Um, which I never knew. <laughs> um, and a healer came from Australia and was working in, came to my clinic where I was working. And he and I were in my my room there. And he said, do you realize your aura is filling the whole room? I nearly freaked out, but that is trying to explain to you. People sensitive can feel my energy. Mm. Um, others just get something from the healing, if you understand what I mean. Um, so I, I am aware now what I never knew when I was young, but I'm giving all the time, I'm giving masses of stuff, but I know how to protect myself now. I never used to. I went round like a Christmas tree with all the lights on. Bless you. So how was yeah. you then, Was you know you said about the story with a tractor, was that the first time that you ever really knew you had a gift or did it go back? No, I, I knew, I knew, mm, wait a minute, that's a good question. I don't know, because I've been aware all my life of things. Wait a minute, is, no, I'll tell you when it was. My life was changed by, I've always given off, and I was teaching pensioners. I was in my four, 30s, 40s. I was teaching pensioners art, because that was my main subject. I was teaching art. And I was in this, um, rest, I don't know what you call it, home where, where people were, you know. Anyway, um, I froze then. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, because there's so much coming to me. There's people trying to talk to me. There's all sorts going on. Um, one of the ladies there was very fond of me and she invited me to come down to Hastings at the weekend and have lunch on the Sunday. She wanted to take me out. And I actually freaked out when she asked me. And I thought, then I did a Helen's Logic. I said, well, I've never let anyone down in my life. I'm going to go. And I actually drove down there. In those days, I drove everywhere. And um, we walked, talked, sat on the way to, because we were in St. Leonard's, which is the next resort. And we would go along. And when she was tired, we sat down on a bench. Then we carried on. And we went and had lunch in, um, in Hastings and then returned. I thought nothing of it because I walk a lot, you know. And She asked to go to healing because I knew about Belgrave Square, which was the Spiritual Healing Association. I took her there and um, she went in and I'm in the waiting room all by myself. Her, her healer came out and, and went like this to me. And I thought, what's that for? Because no one else was there. He said, you, you, what are you doing about your training? You are a healer. You've been doing it all your life. And I sat there, I thought, what? <laughs> anyway, he, he invited me to his clinic on the Sunday and I went there. In that first week, he took me to the Buckingham Palace Mews and we were working on the Queen's chauffeur's stepson with cerebral palsy. Did I know what it was about? I didn't. I just followed, copied him. He took me in the same week to a hospital where a guy was in a coma and we worked on him. Anyway, he came out and he said, you have to you have to come regularly to my clinic. You have this gift. So I went every Sunday. <laughs> I, I then caused trouble with other healers. I'll tell you why. <laughs> when, yeah, it did because very quickly, he, mediumship would come out of me when I worked on someone, and I asked upstairs, <laughs> "Why is this happening?" They said, "You're giving so much love. We're using every drop." And I would say, I thought I was mad at first. I said to somebody, I can still remember the first two. And I said to this woman, I've got a man here who has got elastic on his sleeves. He's got a green eye shield, a striped shirt. And obviously he was a printer, but nobody nowadays knows that's what printers look like. And I can see it, um, uh, a greenhouse outside. He loved his plants and everything. I went through it all. I said, oh, my God, that's my dad. And I'm gobsmacked because I didn't know what I was talking about. Anyway, she was comforted. The next one was a, a, a girl that had um, was a lovely, plump old lady making lovely food. 
And I told her, she said, that's my grandma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I realized I had this knack, I could bring them comfort. Mm -hmm. But the healing organizations go a bit bananas. They don't want you giving any mediumship off. So I learned over the years, once I was trained, <laughs> who, who I could tell who wouldn't freak yeah. and who I couldn't tell. So mm -hmm. that was another of my gifts. Um, also, I did training for past life regression. Now, the reason was I have been aware of being, I've gone somewhere and known I've been there before when not in this life. Mm. So that took, gave me the interest in past life. And I had some done to me. And I, I learned in the end I could do it to other people. And I trained. Um one day we did an exercise and I was, I did it myself. I, tr I was a Roman soldier w in charge of a group of men and I fell down a ravine. I can actually visualize it and nobody could save my life. And I was eaten by wild animals. Wow. Now to this day, I cannot have an animal in my bedroom at night because I don't want to see the, you know, their eyes go. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. um, but I love animals. And I've he I heal animals, but I've had some really interesting lives. But I've been mainly men. The, the ones I remember are men because they have the difficult like, deaths. Um, in war, in you know, in all sorts of things. So I've learned how to take people back to that death and reverse it and say it belongs to that life. It's nothing to do with this life. That's yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, well, the most important ones are women who say, I can never find love. Mm. And you take her back to a life where her partner's going off to sea, no, no communications, and they never come back. So her death wish is, I'm never going to fall in love again, um, blah, blah. Then I get other women who can't have children because in their lifetime, children died through them, you know, by accident or something. And they won't. Anyway, once I work on them, they they find love and they uh, have children. Yeah, I love that. And I'll tell you what, why, why I said that's like really interesting because I when I work with my clients, it, yeah, it's on a one-to-one basis, I re I regress them back, but mm. not to a past life necessarily. And, and touch wood, I haven't had that yet. Yeah, I've had someone go back to the womb. Yeah, because when I'm so say say for example, they're suffering from anxiety. Yeah. And I will regress them back to the time that they first had anxiety and we find it in their body. You know, where were they? Oh, Perfect. Oh, Perfect. All that sort of stuff. Where do you feel it? And we uncover the limiting belief, but also where you're feeling it from your body. Because, yeah. Very important. Yeah. Because that, the physical, and this is what a lot of people don't understand, isn't it? That the body yeah. is our subconscious mind and we, we are one, really. And when we, something like anxiety, it's like a stored memory, isn't it? Yes. So it will until yes. you get rid of that past yeah. experience and the part yes. of you that I, I work with parts, you know, yeah. the part of them that created the anxiety, then it yeah. will just keep going back to it, won't it? Well, definitely, definitely. Um, example, I've had things happen all through my lives to my left leg. And even in this life, I'm, I seem to be doing things to my left leg. So what I'm trying to say is what you're doing is brilliant, your, your way of working. I, I've had the difficulty that I've felt in my body all my life. And um, I've had a much tougher time for that. Mm. But wherever I worked, I've been affected by people I've worked with and so on and so forth, because they've either been in my past lives or something. Um, but your, your, your way of doing things is brilliant. I mean, I, in a way, I wish I hadn't learned about it that far back. Now, I'll tell you why. I had a stepmother who told me I was ugly and stupid all the time. So I didn't, I, I wasn't being fully myself yet. Mm. Uh, and also I have rhesus negative blood, which is apparently they're always healers or something or other. I never knew that. And I can't, I can give blood to anyone, but somebody gives me the wrong blood and I will die. And mm. I never knew that either. Mm. So do you see what I mean? I've got lots of things that have happened that mm. I never knew I had. Mm. So I would rather like the way you've come to it because you 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 were productive for 35 years in in in, in the world and then you came to this. Mm. I brought it, it? Sorry. 
it, I brought it with me all the time and yeah. I've suffered it. Yeah. So yeah, it, it can for you. It's almost like it's been a blessing and a curse, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes. And I would know what was going to happen to certain people. Mm. And I tell the truth. So I have an aunt. She, she's died now. She used to say, Helen, will you please tell me what this is about? And I'd say, Auntie Rhoda, I don't want to tell you anything. You won't like it. I tell me to, I tell her and then she doesn't talk to me for six months because I told her something she didn't want to hear. I can't lie. I I, I can be diplomatic, but I can't lie. No. Does that make sense? Yeah. So um, I've had a tough time. <laughs> How do you like deal with it though? Because when you're a healer and you know, right? Let no, let me reframe that. I think I know what you're going to ask me though. It's like when you don't when you don't know that you've got this gift, right? And you think you're nuts and you think you're going mad. Right? I did think that. <laughs> so how do, how do you get from going from, oh, oh, okay, I'm not nuts and crazy. Yes. I've got yeah. gift. But then you have to learn how to control that gift. So it doesn't actually make you crazy, don't you? Yeah. Well, first of all, I had to be taught how to protect myself. Because hmm. I, you know that expression I used, Christmas tree with all the lights on? Yeah. I was attracting in awful things you know like people who I shouldn't have come to me and um bad things because I didn't know but I learned how to protect myself mm -hmm. um but also I've I don't know I'm a mutable uh, a sign I'm Virgo mutable which means I learn how to cope and how to balance things mm -hmm. it's been tough but I've got there so what I'm trying to say is I wouldn't wish my life on anyone Mm. But I can help other people to avoid some of the stuff I've been through. Does that make sense? So are you, do you, a lot of your client base then, are they more people like you in the sense that they've got this gift, but maybe they don't? Not necessarily. Um, no? Not necessarily. No, I work with every type of person. Um, and it, I'm going to say this, at worst, healing will give comfort and relaxation. Mm. People who are more like me will gain more from it does, mm. does that make sense mm. um it, it, there's horses for courses it different people but the first thing i say to any client is if you don't feel happy with me please go in peace and find who you want to work with mm. because not everybody will respond to me no and i'm well i'm well aware of that and um, they've got they've got to be open to all of this though, aren't they? You it's can't not have easy. someone who comes yes. to you and because this is the same for me as well, right? When you're speaking to people on that initial conversation, they have to resonate with you, but you also you're interviewing them just as much, right? Because exactly, for me, I I expect I I can do real fast work tapping into the yeah. subconscious mind. However, they still need to do other work they still need to understand what's going on and continue with the work it's not you don't just come here and fix you and then you go off and carry on as you did before i know what you're saying you, you have to embrace it don't you and i yes. like one of the crucial things to my process is once we've done the deep dive we go dig in eradicate and throw it away if you like or repurpose yeah. it then they have to have a recording that they listen to for at least three weeks. And that's about embedding new powerful things in their life, right? So I say to them, like, if you haven't, if you're too busy and you haven't even got time to listen to the recording, then mm -hmm. I don't want to work with you because then it won't work properly. And then you'll come moaning that you haven't got the results you wanted. So it's about, you know, do you yes. know what I mean? It's like you. Oh, that's, you that happens with me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, my, my son sent his wife. He only the first wife um to me for because he didn't like her smoking so I turned around to because I can I can do hypnotherapy on people so I turned around to her and I said do you really want to give up smoking and she said no so I said well then I'm not going to work with you because exactly. it's a waste of time, waste but she, time. Yeah. She, she then told me she ground her teeth at night so I said I can help you with that if you really want to stop grinding and I did um I, I like you I'm sorry, they're mowing the grass outside. It's a bit noisy. <laughs> um, and they always do it when I'm busy. <laughs> um, um, I will not work with someone. I mean, I, I won't be nasty, but I'll say, there's no point in this working because you're not taking this seriously. Uh, you're going to have to trust me and you're going to have to work with me. I'm just like you. I can't work with someone who doesn't want to do mm. their part of the work. Mm. 
and it's okay. the same for every practitioner what's the and they asked me when i was training to be a counselor they said what would be your worst client and everybody else said, I don't want to work with a murderer or this, that, and that. I turned around and said, I don't want to work with someone who doesn't want to work with me. Perfect answer, yeah. I really yes. can ask that as well. Yes, <laughs> because they're coming up with, I won't wait. And that means they're judgmental on the client. Mm. Um, everybody, every, You've got to be able to work with anyone who's willing to be worked with. Yeah, that's my that's feeling. True. That's true, yeah, yeah regardless yeah. of their past. Yes, so we're on the same page, you and I. Yeah, I think that's a very good point, actually, because like you say, a lot of people would go, oh, I don't want to work with a murderer, or I don't want to work with a yeah. pedophile, or something like that. Well, yeah. As far as I'm aware, I haven't attracted any of those anyway, but yeah. the, the thing to think about... But you mustn't prejudge. You no, mustn't prejudge. and the thing to think about is that when we get like evil people, terrible people, bad people, right, mostly... That will be because they didn't have the right start in their lives, right? right. They didn't You're have right. The right role models. They didn't get taught correctly. Exactly. You know, exactly. They might have been brought up in a family that all they did was thieve, and that yes. was what they were taught to do. Yeah, so I'm with you really all the way. Fault. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've only met in my whole life. I've only met one truly evil person. Most people have a bit of bad and a bit of good, mm. but this person was so bad that when he walked in my home, because he was a friend of my ex-husband, when he walked in my home, I felt like I'd been killed with a, a, a spear. Really? Yeah, and I, I was I was gobsmacked that this man had come in my home. And my, I told, said to my husband, don't do any business with him. He said, I grew up with him. And the thing is, he ended up, I'll just give you the end of why, why I know I trust my Geiger counter, as I call it. Um, he ended up in prison and deported because they, they were from Lebanon, my, my husband was, and so was this guy. And what he'd done, anybody who stayed in his home, he stole from them. If the police stopped him for a driving offence, he would give a friend's name and address. These are only mild things that I know about, mm. but he must have done something far worse to end up in prison and deported. But I'm just saying that's how, he was just awful. Mm. Um, but I met other semi-bad people but he was the worst and I didn't get the same feeling with other people it was just this particular man Have so you maybe thought I, about working in a prison then or, or doing something in a prison do you know it's funny you saying about that I wanted to work in prisons and um I went to the states to stay with a friend and her husband worked in prison and he was count uh, uh, what what's that counseling that takes six weeks the uh, cognitive behavior he, he was allowed to do that. They wouldn't let him do anything else because six weeks and finish. And he let me come and witness something that went on there. And I said to him, it's very sad that you can only give them six weeks. Just when they start getting there, you have to stop. He said, I know it's awful. Um, and I realized it was no good that because you then leave that person in limbo. Mm. Um, now I've worked with clients for two years or more sometimes. Um, they're getting nearer. <laughs> can you hear them? The guard. Not really. Not oh, good. No. I'm glad because I can. Um, so what I'm saying is that I believe that you have to give the client whatever they need within your limits, mm. not to not to harm yourself in any way. But sometimes they need more of your time than you think, mm. and you just go with the flow. Yeah, it's funny actually because what I do now is quite different to the counselling days because it was very much more structured in it and you're not supposed to come out of your lane and I was trained psychodynamic actually so oh I, right okay which I thought which was good I didn't know that's what I was going to get when I first started doing it just but I'm glad because I because I, and I think because of my directness of what where I was working in the corporate world and that I wasn't very good at all this manby pamby oh how's that make you feel it's like so I could be a bit with psychodynamic yeah. could be a little bit more I never, I, I know exactly what you mean. And I was never quite the counsellor they wanted me to no. be. I'm far no. too, well, I'm too intuitive to start with. But what I'm saying is you get the training and then it's up to you how you yeah. use it. And, I, and I, I never actually did it as a full-time job in the end. I went back, I was still working, but I did yeah. do it as a volunteer for quite a few years. Oh, that's so, interesting. Yeah, so I used to work full-time up in London on a Monday night, and then I'd come home, get off the train, come indoors, get changed, grab my bag, 
off I would go and get in about 10 o'clock at night. And I did that for a long Where time. did you go to do that then? Did you go to their homes or did you work? No, in no. Business? I worked at, a ch I did it at a charity. Okay. Yeah. So all the counsellors were uh, volunteers. Yeah. And then the people just paid a donation. And yeah. I, I did that for a long time. And I loved that because I was working, earning my, my money, if you like, in the corporate world. But that was my feel good factor. That was my putting back. That was my do good in element. Yeah, I understand fully. Yeah. yeah I and, I, and I did that for quite a while. And then I become, um, I was, a, I ended up being, I don't know why that happened either. I was a chair for Relate South Essex for a while as well. Um, a chair for? Oh, you know, like when, when on a charity, you have to have the chair yeah. and all that. So I did that. Oh, I see what you South mean. You Essex mean for a while. chair for the the organisation. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, but then I then I got to the point, and I now realise it was probably the perimenopause and everything that was kicking. I just got to a point, and I can't I can't do this anymore. Um, and there were some things going on in my life at the time as well, and I just I stopped doing it. And then I lost my confidence because I hadn't. You know, like what it's like when you stop doing something for a long time. But also uh, menopausal, pre, um, around the menopausal time, yeah. we all lose confidence. Exactly, exactly. What because happens, of the yeah. way the hormones are working yeah, and everything. exactly. Yeah. And I didn't know that. I just thought... Yeah. I, no, but I I'm thought, saying that's why. Yeah. And, and, and you were perfectly normal like yeah, everyone exactly. else. And I um, didn't know that then. I know that now. Yeah. Oh, you God. wouldn't know that then. No, and so many yeah. people don't, do they? And, yeah. and then in the end, I got made redundant. And then that's when I started on my journey. And I went back that's to work. But yeah, but can you see? Can you see? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but can you see? That's what happens. People either have something at work, mm. or they have an illness. Something has to spark you off, mm. and that the blessing in your life is that you were made redundant. I know, and I was sad for about ten minutes, and then um, <laughs> I was all right. You're so funny. Can uh, I ask a quick question that yeah. people would be puzzled by? Um, when's your birthday? The day, the month particularly 13th of november ah so you're a, a scorpio. scorpio yeah like my daughter you're two days before my daughter um they're very sensitive but they're also quite can be quite stubborn mm. um and do do you forgive she doesn't forgive very easily my daughter she she, she for years she would throw up things that i'd done that i'd forgotten about <laughs> <laughs> yes um I'll give you an example so you understand. When she was small, I was going through hell, divorce, eviction, everything. And I, she was at ballet and I drove past, only slightly, I drove past where she was. And she never let me forget that I, she felt abandoned. Um, and I'd only, I suddenly realised, I had so much on my mind. I suddenly realised I'd just gone past the building and I went back for her. But she'd tell everyone that my mum... Abandoned me. me. Yeah. No, I, um, I would say that um I I've always said that I will forgive, but I won't forget. No, but you're not supposed to forget. Mm. That I mean that I forgive, but you can't forget. Mm. If because... you if you kind of if you do me a disservice, yeah, or do something nasty to me, I I'll I i will not bang on about it, but I will I will always remember and I'll be no. wary of you. No, but I then I've ended friendships like that. Once they do something beyond the pale, I will always smile and say hello if I see you, but mm. I won't have you in my friendship anymore. Mm. So you 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 you've got more, you might have other things in your chart that help you deal it deal with it mm. like that. Mm. That's interesting. Mm. I, I had to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> right, my darling. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, we've run out of time. It's running out. I told you it goes quick, didn't I? It does. It does. It does. So before we go, is, do you want to do a shout out for anything that you're doing or anything? Yes. Like um, I I can I can help people with healing online or what, whatever way they want. Um, I'll quickly say uh, there was a pregnant lady who was suffering in her pregnancy, and you're not supposed to heal or do anything. Well, I talked her through something over the phone, and she then had the baby next day in in a very easy way because she needed that comfort so what i'm saying is if anyone out there needs some help i'm always available please contact me and what we'll do is when we when i put these out obviously yeah. i'll be able to tag you in them as well but <coughs> this video will go up onto youtube eventually as well 
Yeah. Um, and we can put all your details in there. Lovely, lovely. So um, thank you so much for being an amazing guest. It's been a pleasure having you on, on here. And we'll get this streamed out um, in the near future. Um, I have to just say you're an amazing lady too. Oh, thank you, darling. So kind. Yes. It's, um, nice, it's been nice to get to know about you. Yes, we 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 were together in a di different group, aren't we? And this is how this came about. So it's always yes. good to meet new people. Yes. Um, yeah. So if anyone's interested in working with me, um, I'm Millerside Therapy and Coaching. You can find me on all the regular social medias. I'm Julie at Millerside um, on Instagram. But other than that, it's Julie Millerside. Sorry, completely messed that up. Julie Millicide on Instagram. It's Millicide Therapy and Coaching on everything else. So get over to my YouTube channel and where you can watch all my interviews and my client testimonials as well. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time on my Become Unstoppable series. Take care and have a good day. Great.